concerned viewers, welcome to this week's edition of Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, featuring our program on the state of Arctic sea ice and glaciers. The Arctic is the polar crown of our planet, yet the ice and snow in this precious area are disappearing at an unprecedented rate due to climate change, which is driven by the production and consumption of animal products. These destructive practices are the main source for the human-generated greenhouse gases rapidly heating the globe. Today we'll examine how the beautiful but fragile northern polar region is vital to life on our Earth and how it affects weather and climate. One way in which the Arctic plays a key role in regulating global temperatures is through the ice albedo effect by which the area's ancient layer of snow and sea ice reflects 85 to 90 percent of the sun's energy back into space, keeping our planet cool. Hence, the more ice and snow that are present in the region, the cooler our Earth becomes. However, when this cover disappears, the opposite effect occurs as the dark Arctic Ocean and exposed Arctic land absorb the sun's energy and cause planetary warming, which in turn drives more melting and more exposure of these non-reflective surfaces. Oceanographer Dr. James Overland of the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory directs research on this phenomenon and will now provide more details. With ice there to reflect the summer sunlight from the white ice, we absorb a whole lot more heat from the sun that the Earth normally used to not get. And that heat is returned to the atmosphere in the fall, and that helps set up these highly variable climate pattern. A lot of people know that uh, the Arctic is warming twice as fast as anywhere else on the planet, but what we're seeing now is new evidence that this is really accelerating. In 2007, we were uh, really surprised that we lost about 40% of the area of the ice that's normally covered during the uh, summer where it looks like this process will continue. It will go up and down. We'll have more or less ice, but we're on a, a downward trajectory caused by global warming. The planet is warming, and we're seeing an amplification of that warming in the poles of the planet, particularly the Arctic, so the northern pole. We're just coming into the summer conditions uh, in 2010, so we've been watching the aerial extent of ice quite closely, and we're finding that uh, the ice conditions look to be uh, quite light this year, and that we're probably going to lose uh, quite a bit of ice uh, through the summer, and so we're expecting it to be another year that's uh, fairly similar to 2007, which was the last uh, record of the minimum extent of sea ice in the northern hemisphere. For millennia in the Arctic, new ice formed annually over the remaining ice from previous years. However, nowadays the ice is so thin in many places that this multi-year ice has nearly disappeared. Professor David Barber, Canada Research Chair in Arctic System Science at the University of Manitoba, Canada, explains the situation. What happens in the Arctic is that when we lose the ice, we're really losing multi-year sea ice, and that is being replaced with first-year sea ice. So multi-year sea ice is the stuff that survives a summer and starts to regrow again the next year. So it can become quite thick and quite hard. And it used to be that 80 to 85 percent of the Arctic Basin was covered with that kind of ice. We're now down to about 18 percent of the Arctic Basin being covered by that kind of ice. And what happens is uh, as we lose that ice, it's replaced in the fall with this first year ice, which is much thinner. It has a maximum thickness of about two meters. It's much more saline and much warmer, so it's much easier to break and it's much more susceptible to winds and wave action. The frightening loss of Arctic sea ice and glaciers has other profound effects on global climate. 
The delicately balanced ocean current circulation system has many functions, such as carrying vast amounts of energy from the cooler to the warmer parts of our Earth and providing moisture for northwestern Europe's precipitation. This highly complex thermohaline circulation system is driven by differing temperatures and densities of seawater, and any destabilization of this process can have planet-wide climatic effects. If you put an additional fresh water into the North Atlantic by melting Greenland or by having more discharge from Siberian rivers, then you can freshen the North Atlantic so strongly that there won't be any sinking of water anymore, and that would dis disrupt this thermal and circulation could make it stop. Because there's so much heat transport associated with this thermal and circulation, it's going to disturb the entire climate system. Professor Anders Lieberman and other scientists say that disrupting the thermohaline circulation pattern could cause a 10 degrees Celsius drop in average temperature for Europe effectively destroying agricultural production on the continent, shift rainfall away from environmentally sensitive areas such as the Amazon rainforest, or even result in a one meter rise in the North Atlantic Ocean. We'll now pause for a brief message, and when we return we'll examine other ways in which Arctic warming can severely affect global weather and climate. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television.